What age did you make 100k at? 12. <laughs> no way, bro. You're lying. 12, 13. I don't know exactly the age, but I did a okay, So let's get into this. Axon Teenage Millennia is how to go rich. Um, I'm a fan of Graham Stephan, and he did a video like this. And I was like, okay, why did I react to this video by Jordan Welsh? Um, where he did a video, Axon Teenage Millionaires, um, how they got rich, right? And if you're new here, my name is Alan Kennett. Welcome to the channel and remember to smash the like button. Most of you don't smash it. And if you smash it, it helps my channel. So please don't be stingy. Also subscribe to the channel so that um, YouTube gets to recommend it. Um, if you don't want to subscribe, just please like the video, right? Um, that will go a whole lot away, right? And you think that a good percentage of people watching this video will subscribe or like but less than 10 even less than five percent do so if you're watching you know smash like and leave a comment okay so let's just get into the video and straight into it these kids are some of the richest teenagers in the world so i flew them out to miami to spend a day together and learn exactly how they made their millions and first of all i love how the video is like accent teenage millionaires how they got rich and you want to do an interview of this millionaire but to prove that you're also in their level you flew them out love that and this first kid became a millionaire at just 16. here's how my boy good to oh, see wow. you what's up man nice to meet you hey so first off how old are you and how do you make your money all right so i just turned 16 and I make my money with Snapchat, YouTube, TikTok, and all these platforms. So break that down a little bit. You make money on all those platforms, yes. but how do you... Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, all these platforms. How old am I again? And... <laughs> wow, at 16, that is awesome. Actually do it. I create content on celebrities, on news. I make satisfying videos as well. And I just create engaging videos on unique stories every day using a team. And we just pump like 10 videos out a day on multiple accounts. And what's the most you made in a month from doing this? Uh, in a month, the most you've generated on even one account is roughly $600,000. $600,000. Yo, <laughs> fun fact, I used to work for a Nigerian media company called um, Bella Ninja and they have an Instagram channel that curates content, right? So it's basically like a content creator and I've been trying to do that for my own self and yo, to do that at 16, that is a lot of work, right? Just think it's 10 videos a day, but 10 videos a day for times 30 days, like on multiple different channels and you have to post and remember to post at a certain time you you deserve the 600 <laughs> at 15 years old yeah, i did that when i was 15. what was your parents reaction to you making 600,000 at 15. yeah so i showed them the dashboard the first second i actually saw the revenue and they didn't believe it was real they thought i faked the numbers on my screen so they made me refresh it a bunch of times <laughs> but they think it's really insane is it possible to show us some of the numbers on your phone because you know people are gonna be watching this like ain't no He's way this kid is making this money so in eight days on one of my shows i've made 40 grand so far in september oh my god um which is pretty cool so break that down a little bit you're talking about I mean, snapchat shows yeah a lot of people don't even know what that is so what is a snapchat show and how do you make money off of that so a snapchat show is basically something that pops up on the discovery page when you go on the platform the way you can make money is strictly through ad revenue so when you post your video the advertisers from snapchat will pay you a cpm just like youtube does and how many videos are you guys putting out every day so we have roughly nine to ten shows and we put out a video a day on each show and at this point you're not doing any of the editing you just come up with the ideas or you don't even do that anymore so at the beginning i was doing all the work editing my partner would script write and all that stuff but eventually we started hiring out people as we started to build more capital but we basically have a team running everything for us now you're still in high school wait um this is the first time i'm hearing about a snapshot show um, if you're in Nigeria and you know of an Instagram celebrity called Bob Risky and he always like bragged about how he had like a Snapchat um, show but I for one I'm not on the Snapchat platform or I'm on the Snapchat platform but I hardly interact with it so this is really eye-opening I never knew like you could do this I dropped out of high school I just dropped out like three weeks ago is there any did he just say <laughs> no crosswords did he just say he dropped out of high school <laughs> That's insane. Please go back. I think for this particular um, teenager, he is very um, outspoken. He sounds a lot matured for his age and he knows what he's talking about, basically, right? So yeah, good one for him. So I'm the biggest sneaker supplier in all of Miami. Hey, so how'd you actually get started in the sneaker game? So I started off buying shoes off regular kids. Back then I used to camp outside stores and 
I would have to pay off managers and stuff. But I worked my way up to the point where now I have over 20 stores across the U.S. that when they get inventory, they give it to me instead. What was the first, like, big flip? Wait, did he just admit to bribing his manager? So what is going on here? <laughs> you made with sneakers. I mean, I made, like, $50 flips, and I was, like, 14 at the time, so 50 bucks lasted me a while. I would say the first big flip was the off-white UNCs. I got, like, five, six pairs. I made... I think $1,200 on each, and at the time, that was insane. Nowadays, you the plug for all the biggest guys out there. Can sure. you break down some of the people that you've actually sold shoes to? Yeah, I've sold shoes to Kai, Jamie Foxx, DJ Khaled, Kabi, you know, the guy that goes like this, Corey Masvidal, I've linked up with Alvin. Everyone that comes into Miami and has a performance, let's say at Live or something, the club owner will connect me to these artists, and that's kind of my way into getting with them, you know? How are you able to connect with these celebrity people? I sit home and I research, and I see who are their friends, who is their manager, what label are they with and I slowly kind of creep my way into the circle you know what I mean and it's work because like with Kai I knew Kai's friend's friend became homies with his friend and then worked my way I think what he said here is just, it's very very important I think it's just with the whole concept of getting rich people just fantasize it a lot and forget that it's hard work like being on Instagram every day for seven days a week 30 days in the month checking this checking that following on that person and trying to make this connection trying to make this research here work you you might think like instagram is all fun but that gets boring real quick <laughs> and just having that motivation to keep on going you really have to love it um because you need hard work to make what he's saying makes sense for you at the end of the day up until eventually I sold kicks to Kai. So it's hard work, but if you really dedicate yourself to it, you can do it. I see you got some shoes here on the table. Maybe you could break those down real quick. These are the off-white Chicago's. I think the valuation for each is about six or seven grand, which is insane for yeah. a pair of sneakers. Dior Jordan 1's, extremely, extremely limited. They go for about 10 grand a pair. From making that first $50 flip to today, like how much do you bring in per month now selling shoes? Uh, I would say about 100 to 150,000 in revenue. How much money in your lifetime do you think you've Not spent? Not bad. I can't even put a number on that. At least six, seven million. Were you good at school? Bro, I was awful in school. I had a 1.4 GPA. I failed math. I failed French. <laughs> I failed Spanish. I failed majority. I'm sorry. 1.4 is, is bad. <laughs> 1.4. You ready? You ready to write in tests? Like, so this particular person, the story is much more relatable, like it's a normal, you know, traditional kind of business in a way. Um, but then again, if you don't know the business, the ins and outs, then you're probably gonna <laughs> not be as rich as they are. And again, they make it sound easy, but then again, remember what he said, he was stalking people on Instagram and sort of like paying off managers. I don't know what that means. <laughs> he was talking about prime, <laughs> but it, it's not. The point is, it's not a straight road. Like, there's a lot of ups and downs. So if you're not prepared for that, definitely don't jump into any of this. We're gonna go meet up with this kid who I think has the coolest job in the world. Let's go talk to him. So how old are you and how do you make your money? Uh, I'm 19 and I make my money from software. Okay, so tell them about this software that you built. So if you oh, see wow. any of the AI Drake or AI Conscious on the internet, uh, you may be wondering how that's done. Well, we build a software for it. It's called Musicify. You go to the site, upload a song, vocals, whatever it is, and you can switch it to any voice you want. How long ago did you launch this, and now how many users do you guys have using this every month? Yeah, so we launched it five months ago, and it now has over 1.3 million users, and we're growing pretty quickly, like great, gaining two, three hundred. Yo, 1.3 million users, it's people, people raise 50 million to get 100k users, right? So 1.3 million users at 19 for your software online, that is mad. What type of money does something like that make? Yeah, we, we make like 4 to 5k most days. That's crazy, just for starting five months ago. So did you build this with your own money or are you raising money from investors? So originally when we started out five months ago, it was just me on my computer in my basement working on it and then we started making lots of money and now it's at a point where we can raise like two to three million dollars to scale it quicker and you already got investors ready to put money in on this exactly we're talking to a bunch of really big people in the music space so if you're big in music and you want to invest in some cool tech hit us up maybe you could give us a little demo of the app and show us how it works so right now we're oh. basically going on youtube so we're taking this song hey dear delilah and we're going to go to our site upload it and we're going to select spongebob as our artist and we're going to convert it so you're telling me that this is going to change the vocals of the song from these guys to Spongebob. 
What would somebody actually use? Oh, oh my god, I'm trying to learn software right now so I could just see how that code would work because all you have to do is preset pitches for um, for these characters and play the song through that pitch and you have the software. <laughs> Make a song easy, but good luck writing the Python code for that. This for like are people using this just to make funny videos or is there an actual use for this tool? Let's say I'm a male singer and now I want female vocals in my song. Normally I'll have to hire yeah. a vocalist, pay for studio time, then pay them royalties for every single stream. But now imagine as a male singer, I can just convert my voice into a female singer. Uh, lately we just launched a voice to instrument tool. So if you want to like make the sound of an instrument, you can just hum anything and convert it into an instrument as well. Gotcha, so it's really a tool for artists to make music better. Um, by the way, I have a friend that I brought from London, the youngest millionaire that I know, crazy. But I'm not gonna stop you and just say, I'm curious to how do, how do you make money? Like people just pay for the software or what? Like at, if 300,000 people are paying $1, is that will come? That should be, I don't know. There's a lot of explaining here. See kid, flying a private jet to like 15. So if you want to meet him, you can go chat with him right now. He's upstairs? He's upstairs. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Come on. So, how old are you, bro? And how do you make your money? I'm currently 18. And uh, I made the, the vast majority of my money, I think, from dropshipping, just reinvesting their own to crypto. So I'm known as like the crypto kid. I think uh, crypto is probably the main thing I'm known for. When did you actually become a millionaire from crypto? So I think I passed that uh, benchmark at around like... Oh wait, he has a Forbes article at 16. Yo. <laughs> Yo, okay. That is amazing. 16 years old, I think I can safe to say at 16 years old, uh, it was like the first time I saw like a million in like profits from everything I've done. So it was like, it's quite a momentous occasion, but I feel like 100k for me was a grander benchmark. You know, when I hit 100k, it was like, like oh, I'm actually onto something compared to 1 million. What age did you make 100k at? 12. <laughs> no way, bro, you're lying. 12, 13, I don't know exactly the age, but I did it through dropshipping. Do you remember what you sold back in the day to make your first 100k? Like, I did the mistake all the, like, beginner dropshippers do. They're like, oh, I'm gonna start a clothing store, I'm gonna start selling watches. But, uh, I think my successful hit was when I did, a uh, collapsible flash. So I did, like, those bottles would, like, collapse down, and that was quite a big hit. Bro, but at 12 years old, most people is just playing Fortnite or just getting really heavy into, like, watching YouTube, TikTok. Like, nobody's really starting businesses. What made you want to start a business at 12 years old? How did you even have that foresight? At 12 years old, most people are selling bread on the streets of Nigeria. <laughs> you know what they're playing Fortnite? Like, at 12, 12 years old, what was I doing? I was trying to become a writer. <laughs> no, no. Not doing dropshipping, definitely not. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I was the same. Like, I can't slander everyone who plays Fortnite. When I was playing Fortnite at that age, too. It was just in my other extra times, like, I, I, I like discovering new things, right? So then uh, I, at the age of, like, seven and eight, I was, like, 3D printing phone cases and, like, selling them to my friends. And even though that was, like, a, a business, I would say, it was, like, the first time I tried something. I was, like, I like getting into, like, that creative sense where, like, the sense of you create a whole company and you actually provide utility and create something. Even though dropshipping isn't, like, providing utility, per se, I like the sense I accomplish something, you know? How do you turn 100,000 from dropshipping to over a million dollars in crypto while still in middle school? Like, how do you do that, bro? Like early 2018, I think I got Bitcoin around like the 2,000 to price level and I got Ethereum maybe like 200 or $300. I do believe the most successful entrepreneurs are the ones that funnel their funds from previous business into new business. Like, so for me, I like that mindset. Like, you know, every time I enter a new business venture, I funnel in my existing funds to the next thing and I just, you know, leverage it. You're just gonna stop here and just say, First of all, how do the parents, like, how are the parents live with these children? <laughs> like, imagine <laughs> being the parents of this, how does that dynamic work? And second of all, I feel bad for people who are in third world countries, like myself, um, watching this kind of videos, because again, your environment determines your success. So it's like, oh yeah, they make it sound easy and blah, blah, blah. But if you live in a country where there's no internet, there's no access to good food and stuff, right? How do you have enough free time, you know, and thinking space to start playing on the internet at 12 years old and experimenting with these things and even having access to money, right? So yeah. Just put it that in context, right? So that we don't just all, Ooh, oh my God, what was I doing in my life? <laughs> okay, so we've come to the end of this video and it's just insane like how these people are young and they're able to like articulate themselves. Like it's just, 
they talk with so much confidence of like a 30 year old or i don't even think 30 year olds are this confidence to be honest because i have like 30 year old friends who haven't figured their life out and that is not like a jig to them but it's just saying that yo i feel like this new age of the internet kids um is really gonna be something because i keep on saying like imagine if nigerians had unlimited internet i feel like we'll be the entertainment capital of the world because <laughs> imagine the content that will come out from nigeria alone it will be insane like people are hungry to do stuff and again it's just in part of like context like, imagine if there were so many accessible things that were not inaccessible in nigeria and they became accessible like just give us like a year you see changes happening and it's it's just crazy all you have to do is start and yep if you like this video subscribe 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 smash the like button so that youtube gets to recommend this video to more people and leave a comment let me know what you think you can also follow me on instagram facebook twitter linkedin it's all on kenneth stay safe guys peace out